It was 2 a.m. and I couldn't sleep. A random question popped into my head. Why don't planes fly over the North Pole? At first it sounded simple, but the more I thought about it, the more complicated it became. I always assumed flying over the North Pole would be shorter, like drawing a straight line across the top of the Earth. But then I realized, very few planes actually do that. So, why? First, navigation. Near the magnetic North Pole, compasses become unreliable. The magnetic field is weak and constantly shifting up to 40 miles per year. While planes today use GPS and advanced systems, magnetic readings are still part of backup protocols. And when even the backup might fail, pilots avoid the risk. Navigating the skies has always been a complex task, requiring precision and a deep understanding of various instruments. One of the most critical tools in a pilot's arsenal is the cockpit compass. This seemingly simple device has been guiding aviators for decades, helping them chart their course through the vast expanse of the sky. However, as we venture closer to the magnetic North Pole, the reliability of this instrument comes into question. The magnetic North Pole is not a fixed point. Unlike the geographic North Pole which remains constant, the magnetic North Pole is in a state of perpetual motion. It drifts due to changes in the Earth's molten outer core, which generates the magnetic field. This drift can be as much as 40 miles per year, making it a moving target for navigators. The magnetic field in this region is also weaker, which further complicates navigation. In the early days of aviation, pilots relied heavily on magnetic compasses to find their way. These compasses, while generally reliable, could be thrown off by the magnetic anomalies near the poles. Pilots had to be acutely aware of these potential discrepancies and adjust their course accordingly. This required a high level of skill and experience, as even a small error in navigation could lead to disastrous consequences. Today, modern aircraft are equipped with advanced navigation systems including GPS, inertial navigation systems, and sophisticated avionics. These systems provide highly accurate positional data, allowing pilots to navigate with confidence even in challenging environments. However, despite these technological advancements, the magnetic compass remains an essential part of the cockpit. It serves as a backup in case of system failures, providing a reliable, albeit less precise, means of navigation. The importance of the magnetic compass as a backup cannot be overstated. In the event of a failure of the primary navigation systems, pilots must be able to rely on their compasses to guide them safely to their destination. This is particularly true in remote areas, where ground-based navigation aids may be sparse or non-existent. In such situations, the magnetic compass can be a lifesaver, providing the critical information needed to maintain course and avoid hazards. However, the challenges posed by the magnetic North Pole mean that even this backup system can be compromised. Pilots operating in these regions must be aware of the limitations of their compasses and take additional precautions to ensure their safety. This might include cross-referencing multiple navigation sources, using celestial navigation techniques, or relying on visual landmarks when possible. In addition to the magnetic North Pole, other factors can affect the accuracy of a cockpit compass. Local magnetic anomalies, caused by variations in the Earth's crust, can create deviations that must be accounted for. Electrical systems within the aircraft can also generate magnetic fields that interfere with the compass. Pilots must be trained to recognize and mitigate these potential sources of error to ensure accurate navigation. In conclusion, while modern technology has greatly enhanced our ability to navigate the skies, the humble magnetic compass remains a vital tool for pilots. Its reliability as a backup system is crucial, especially in challenging environments like the magnetic North Pole. By understanding the limitations and potential sources of error, pilots can use their compasses effectively to ensure safe and accurate navigation. The cockpit compass with its rich history and enduring importance continues to play a key role in the art and science of aviation. Now picture this, you're flying at 35,000 feet, an emergency happens. Where do you land? The polar region has almost no suitable airports, no cities, no nearby help. 
In an emergency, those minutes count, and over the North Pole, there's nowhere to go. Imagine yourself on a long-haul flight, perhaps from New York to Tokyo or from London to Los Angeles. The flight path takes you over the Arctic, a vast expanse of ice and snow stretching as far as the eye can see. The view from your window is breathtaking with endless white landscapes and the occasional glimpse of a polar bear or a seal. But as serene and beautiful as it may seem, this region poses significant challenges for aviation. At cruising altitude, the aircraft is flying smoothly and everything seems normal. Suddenly, an emergency situation arises. It could be a medical emergency, a technical failure, or even a sudden change in weather conditions. The immediate question that comes to mind is, where can the plane land safely? In most parts of the world, there are numerous airports, cities, and emergency services that can provide assistance. However, over the Arctic, the options are extremely limited. The polar region is one of the most remote and inhospitable places on Earth. It lacks the infrastructure that is taken for granted in more populated areas. There are very few airports, and those that do exist are often small and not equipped to handle large commercial aircraft. The harsh weather conditions, with extreme cold ice and snow, further complicate any potential emergency landing. In an emergency, every minute counts. The crew needs to make quick decisions to ensure the safety of everyone on board. But over the North Pole, the nearest suitable airport could be hundreds, if not thousands, of miles away. This means that the aircraft may have to continue flying for a considerable distance before it can find a safe place to land. During this time, the situation on board could deteriorate, making the emergency even more critical. Moreover, the lack of nearby cities and emergency services means that even if the plane manages to land, help may not be immediately available. In populated areas, emergency responders can reach the scene quickly, providing medical assistance, technical support, and other necessary services. In the Arctic, however, it could take hours or even days for help to arrive, depending on the location and weather conditions. This scenario highlights the importance of careful planning and preparation for flights over the polar regions. Airlines and pilots need to be aware of the unique challenges and risks associated with these routes. They must have contingency plans in place, including alternative airports and emergency procedures to ensure the safety of passengers and crew. In conclusion, while flying over the Arctic offers a unique and awe-inspiring experience, it also comes with significant risks. The remoteness, lack of infrastructure, and harsh weather conditions make it a challenging environment for aviation. In an emergency, those minutes count, and over the North Pole, there's nowhere to go. The temperature over the pole can drop below minus 60 Celsius. That's a problem. Jet fuel can begin to thicken or freeze. Hydraulic systems can be strained. Planes are built tough but not invincible. Communication is critical during any flight, but in polar regions the ionosphere can block or distort radio signals. Satellite coverage also gets weaker near the poles. That can mean total silence between plane and ground for minutes or even longer. Then comes regulation. Not all countries allow polar routes. Airlines need special permissions, certifications, and equipment. There's also something called ETOPS, a rule that says twin-engine planes must always be within a safe distance of a diversion airport. The pole? Not safe. Now to be clear, some planes do fly near the Arctic. These are called polar routes. Flights from North America to Asia often pass close to the pole, but they don't go directly over it unless absolutely necessary. And when they do, pilots are trained, planes are equipped, and everything is triple-checked. Polar routes are a fascinating aspect of modern aviation, offering a unique and efficient way to connect distant parts of the world. These routes take advantage of the Earth's curvature, allowing for shorter travel times and reduced fuel consumption. However, Flying near the Arctic comes with its own set of challenges and considerations that make it a specialized field within aviation. One of the primary reasons airlines opt for polar routes is the significant reduction in flight time. By flying over the top of the world, airlines can shave off several hours from their journeys, making it a more attractive option for both passengers and airlines. This not only saves time but also reduces fuel consumption, which is a major cost factor for airlines. The savings in fuel also translate to a smaller carbon footprint, 
making polar routes a more environmentally friendly option. However, the Arctic is not a forgiving environment. The extreme cold, unpredictable weather and remote location mean that any flight taking this route must be meticulously planned. Pilots flying these routes undergo specialized training to handle the unique challenges posed by the Arctic. They are trained to navigate using the stars and other celestial bodies, as traditional navigation systems can sometimes be unreliable near the poles due to magnetic interference. Aircraft flying polar routes are also specially equipped to handle the harsh conditions. They are fitted with advanced navigation systems, de-icing equipment, and other technologies to ensure safe passage. In addition, these planes carry extra fuel and emergency supplies in case they need to divert to an alternate airport. The remote nature of the Arctic means that suitable diversion airports are few and far between, so pilots must be prepared for any eventuality. Another critical aspect of flying polar routes is communication. The remoteness of the Arctic means that traditional communication systems may not always be reliable. To address this, aircraft flying these routes are equipped with satellite communication systems, allowing them to stay in constant contact with air traffic control and other relevant authorities. This ensures that any issues can be promptly addressed and assistance can be provided if needed. The safety of passengers and crew is always the top priority when flying polar routes. Airlines and regulatory authorities have stringent protocols in place to ensure that every aspect of the flight is carefully monitored and controlled. This includes regular maintenance checks, rigorous training for pilots and crew, and continuous monitoring of weather conditions. In addition, flights are often accompanied by specialized meteorologists who provide real-time updates on weather patterns and potential hazards. Despite the challenges, Polar routes offer a unique and efficient way to connect the world. They represent the cutting edge of aviation technology and expertise, showcasing the industry's ability to adapt and innovate in the face of adversity. For passengers, flying over the Arctic can be a once-in-a-lifetime experience, offering breathtaking views of the polar landscape and a sense of adventure. In conclusion, while flying near the Arctic is not without its challenges, the benefits of polar routes make them an attractive option for airlines and passengers alike. With the right training, equipment, and planning, these routes offer a safe, efficient, and environmentally friendly way to travel between distant parts of the world. So the next time you find yourself on a flight that takes you over the top of the world, take a moment to appreciate the incredible journey you're on and the expertise that makes it possible. One more twist. The shortest distance between two points on Earth isn't a straight line on a map. It's a curve, called a great circle route. That's why flights often arc over the Earth. They're not being inefficient. They're being smart. So now you know. Planes can fly near the pole but usually don't because of safety, cold, communication, and regulations. That was the question that kept me up at night. But now, I have my answer. What's your midnight question? Please subscribe to our channel for more intriguing content. Like and share this video. Until next time, stay curious.